Big news, PTUs open all waves, but there's a lot of strings attached and a lot of bugs fixed too, for the record. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long-term subscribers. So, one thing I want to start off the bat is that storage access does not work inside the Habs, at least where I tested in Orison, and based on accounts that I've heard from other players that are playing over the weekend on the PTU that's open to all waves. That means anyone can go on to the, uh, if you have a pack game package, you go on to the website, you go to settings, you hit the, the PTU copy over there, and I'll include a link that has a guide to that in the description. But anyway, uh, one of the other things is that storage, I said, was not functional inside the Habs. So what do you do? What you do is you go to the storage that's outside of the Habs, and you have the old school, uh, as many people call it, uh, the old school inventory system, but you access it at these type of things. And they're everywhere. You don't have to worry about finding this specific one. They're everywhere. Now, there is a camera glitch. <laughs> Uh, because of the changes they made. But if you drag the items over and the the uh, equipment over, you will find these dots. I did not edit this because I wanted to show exactly what you're getting into, uh, especially with PTU. So start with your undersuit, then add armor, then add the gear. Just like normal, but it is a little bit disorienting. It's almost like trying to tie your shoes without looking. You get used to it, but, you know, I'd imagine the first couple times you try to do something like that... Uh, it would be uh, uh, not exactly easy, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, another probably ample example of the PTU is, of course, still a test environment. I suspect this camera issue will be fixed over time, but more importantly, it shows that CIG is going back to the older school inventory drag directly to your character onto the model, and that's it. Now, those who have been into this PTU for many patches, like myself, uh, you know, we've started build, uh, the many builds, um, you know, we, we've been relying on dragging this to that box at the bottom, and then you open the container on the bottom, and then you can access the items and put them back. Now, I didn't go crazy with suiting up because I just wanted to just get it over and done with, and it, obviously, I just saw the difficulties. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, is, if you haven't already, is if you have a RSI... Ursa Medivac, aka the Nursa, uh, be sure to pull that out first and then be sure that it's outside of the uh, the elevator area. Right where the stripes are to the right of there is where the elevator actually is, but it's probably a good idea to have it back even further because if something bumps it or something else, you don't want it to fall in and then you lose your res medical respawn and that can be really annoying, especially during PTU playtesting. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, this is my obligatory taking some rare items like the cot. Uh, there's a lamp hidden inside that Stellar Sonic jukebox in the Stellar Sonic jukebox and just showing they still don't work. For the record, I did also try the workbench, but I'm trying to get better with editing and, and making it more time sensitive, especially when it's not like an exploration video per se. It's more of just giving you the news and how to survive in this and, keep, and, and thrive in this environment. I wanted to note that the elevator for cargo is far faster than the ship elevator, and I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but eventually the cargo elevator will be able to handle ground vehicles, at least that's the initial plan. And if you look here, look at the sheer speed that this thing comes back. And you can even have the time by sending the elevator back to the, the warehouse elevator to your, to your storage area, and then it's ready to go immediately. Like you saw how fast that Pico was able to be deployed. It was more me just trying to find the th item to drag and drop onto the thing. It's a little different when you're trying to load a massive amount of different kinds of cargo or something like that, but at least you can get the idea. But you can send the elevator back, and that's a good tip to speed things up for you. So whenever you're not using the, the warehouse and you're not intending to throw items in to put them back into your storage this way, it's a good idea to send the elevator back. And for the record, if you're having issues with the storage kiosk, you can use this cargo elevator. You can put those uh, FPS style items and, uh, and, and accessories and little things like that, flare or whatever, back into the elevator and it will put it back into the overall storage. It's all coming from the same place. You can bring things in and out through this system. And that's kind of the headline here. So if you look at this massive ship, the Hammerhead, uh, inside the XL hangar. I used this this go around because I was trying to think of what can truly convey the, the sheer size of this massive elevator. And it is all one piece. Um, 
another video earlier in this build set, I've mentioned for 3.24, I've mentioned that uh, there, I wish it was a nesting doll idea. Some other backers have mentioned that to me, and I thought it was a great idea. That's why I mentioned it. And then I forgot to mention what that meant. Uh, so the nesting doll concept means that that elevator in the middle, if it has to be this big, it would be nice to see sub elevators. So if you bring in an item or you take back an item that's smaller than the overall elevator size, it only brings in or out a smaller elevator in the middle of the space and then let that elevator be faster. Oh, that's, that's basically the general concept. Now, the other factor that other backers have suggested is that maybe we don't need all that. Just allow us to spawn multiple vehicles and ships on a single platter, so to speak. So if you're in an elevator of this size, you should be able to uh, put in, let's say, 50 Furies or something crazy. Obviously, whatever the server can, can provide. You all saw, this, if you saw my earlier video, I'll put it in the cards, uh, Toji's collection of ground vehicles. He has an amazing assortment, all the way from Novas all the way down to PTVs and everything in between. And you saw the amount of uh, issues he had. And I am going to try to catch up with him later on in this build cycle to see if he's had time to take a look at his collection again and see if there was some changes because uh, that's something I also want to track. I don't just want to cover, you know, the bad or the good. I want to cover everything. Uh, this right here is showing that uh, ship weapons and turrets are functional and they are quite functional. You'll see this Nursa uh, be uh, not destroyed but com heavily damaged very easily. And if there was a glitch that someone was using to try to get into your into your instanced personal hangar, private hangar, and uh, they are not being teleported out after a few seconds, you absolutely could jump on a ship turret and uh, or or ship weapon system and basically uh, let them know what's what's up. And you saw I did not get a crime stat for that. Obviously, if I was taking out a player, that would be different. Uh, but. The point is it is an option and uh, you absolutely could test weapon systems, you could see rate of fires, you could test messing around with your coolers and upgrading items, especially as components get more and more uh, customizable over time. And you could do all of that right inside your own private hangar now. That's the little things for me that, that I think are really cool with this hangar system. I know it's not the be all end all, but uh, yeah. This is me just being silly, testing out, jumping out of a hammerhead's front door. And I don't even know if you could call this testing, it's just me messing around. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll just use the paramed and hit the B key so I can heal myself. You can notice the damage indicator, forward damage, obviously from the fall. And then the noise that I had medical issues. But the paramed said I was at 100%. So I go over to the Nursa. That's a little busted up for the wear, and I'm sure it's not pleasant because it probably knows I did it. I'm sorry, Nursa. But <laughs> I get on the bed, and it still shows that I'm at 100%. No medical abnormalities, like a damaged arm or something like that or whatnot. No, no things that are going to kill me every time. Now, granted, it's not the end of the world because I can still regenerate all, even in this damaged Nursa. And that goes to show the, the, the testament to this, to this vehicle and how useful it is. But still, the point stands that this noise is rather annoying, so try not to take damage inside your own personal hangar. Um, one thought I have is that if, if I changed uh, undersuits and helmets and such, it might change that over or just take a helmet off, things like that. You can see the damage from that Hammerhead's quad turret. It's just really nice, really, really nice. And I did not move that wheel. That's, that's literally how it, how it looked, and then you can see later on the, the physics allowed it to fall. Um, oh, physics were disabled inside the Habs is what I was, what I was getting at earlier. And the storage was kind of, it looks like, indirectly impacted. That was so servers could function at a higher level while there's an influx of players now that all players can, can check out the test, the test world. So in general with the PTU, as it gets more and more stable, they open it up to more and more waves. By having all waves of, uh, of backers allowed into this space, it really changes the game. I wanted to leave this part in showing that I did have issues um, changing gear. So I, as I said, I could go up to, these, to the item kiosk, storage kiosk, and uh, put gear on following the dots, but changing gear was not the case. Now, what I didn't realize was happening was that gear was going on the ground 
right in front of the, the location. So it was dropping onto the ground. So I wanted to show if you had the issue, you don't get the dots or you already had something on and you need to change it to a different set of gear, maybe environmental armor that's for hot or cold environments instead of regular armor or weapon FPS style heavy armor instead of lighter stuff, light suits or whatever. You can absolutely just do that, grab it, carry it, and then go back into your, your personal inner thought through F, hold F, and then that opens up the circular keys when you right click and then bam you can equip and that'll just change it out and then the other piece of equipment is on the ground now <laughs> this is where the fun part gets uh, i was not able to uh collect some of the items that were put on the ground but some of them i could so your mileage may vary i believe you will not first of all it's the pt you're not going to lose anything on monday or tuesday they'll have a new build and you'll have everything back anyway so don't sweat it but i don't think you'll lose it at any rate even though the the, the stuff is sitting on the ground inside your own personal hangar just food for thought though uh if you need different things so i know i look like it's mixed match now on my character that's why I just wanted to show there was a workaround for even if the dots don't work, if you drop the stuff on the ground, preferably in your private hangar, don't do this in public because then you'll be very upset if somebody just starts grabbing your stuff and using it, um, you can do that. And if you accidentally un brought out the wrong thing or you, did, were, man, you were able to pick up the thing you, you unequipped, what you can do is carry it over to the freight elevator inside your personal hangar, place it on the freight elevator, and then it will go back to the inventory. So the freight elevator is just a giant version of the storage kiosk, essentially, if you want to think of it that way. You absolutely could. And I, I'm not saying that um, this is like a seamless analogy or something, but in general, it's the way I think of it. It's an 1120 SCU for the XL, and it keeps going. It gets a little smaller and smaller and smaller as the hangers get smaller, but they're still way bigger than that uh, storage kiosk is, <laughs> at least before. Um, with the container it had, if I remember right, it was 10 SCU that it could hold at any given time, whatever you were turning in and picking out of it to then uh, pull out of your inventory. But this gigantic elevator can hold far more than that. Now, if they stick with the drag and drop model, that means that there is no uh, limit to the storage space of stuff you can withdraw from that storage container. So use your judgment. Don't like pull out if you if you if you're able to pull out a missile or something. Don't do that <laughs> um, because it's going to look really crazy. But I'm going to wrap this up with a nice discussion I have with Toast. This is from the build just before the weekend. I wish you all a great real weekend. And I hope to see you in the PTO. Every time I see one of these ships, it reminds me of like, a, like a hammerhead whale I would have expected to see in the void of Dishonored. If, if the hammerhead in that game is influenced by like the, sh the shark, that makes a lot of sense because it's just vertical instead of horizontal. Yeah. I, I f have a memory from somewhere seeing a whale, but instead of the hammerhead fins going out the side, it went up and down, but I cannot remember where I saw it. So people are very uh, frustrated because sometimes they'll fly in and they don't know which part is the spaceport. So now mm. CIG just keeps adding in these, these strobing beacons and these bright beacons in each one of the, the large planetary landing locations. I, I, you only really see them at night. But yeah, it looks like that's one of them up there. I kind of get it. Like, there's no real determinate... There's, there's no real good way to see spaceports. Like, obviously, Lorville is freaking easy because it's in the center of the entire city. But the rest of them, they're not that easy to find. I mean, no, that's not true. New Babbage is also easy. It's in the side of a freaking mountain. But Area 18 is very difficult to find. Area 18, I think, was the one that started everything. Yeah, fine. City at the time you go to land. Good luck finding it. Yeah, that one's a nightmare. 
I think that was the one that started the whole strobing thing. Because Area 18, uh, even I can't find it once in a while. Like, I look yeah. for the landmarks, and like you said, when you have the fog bank blocking the, your view of the landmarks, and you're in a v you're in one of the larger ships that doesn't really want to roll back and forth. Uh, the other thing is, like, the quantum beacon in Area 18 is in the wrong spot. It's like dead center yeah. of the city, not where the spaceport is. Yeah, all of them, as long as your ship is in range, it should automatically have a beacon showing you where it's at. Like, you should not have to contact a ATC for it to pop up. As long as your ship is in range, you should be able to see it. At least that, that's my take. Agreed, yeah. There's realism, and then there's like, look, we, we, we're just, you know, we have to make this game playable. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking that actually might be realism. Like... Planes have night vision. Yeah, especially in the military or, you know, certain logistics ship uh, aircraft and stuff. They do have yeah. that as assisted heck helicopters for like medical emergencies have it. Why don't um, why don't we have it? I mean, like I, I, I remember watching cops when I was a kid in the 90s and they would have like the helicopter footage. I mean, yeah, it was black and white and grainy, but you could still see. Yeah. One funny thing about the helmet you're wearing. Um, so helmets, they changed the pricing, the pr most of the pricing on most of the armors. The helmets and the chest pieces are some of the most expensive parts now. But the arms, the legs, they're like nowhere near as much money. And the argument was that the helmet has these uh, technologies in it, like HUDs and stuff. And it's like, just, okay. <laughs> and why doesn't it have adaptive vision? You know, and they have added night vision for uh, gun scopes, like weapon scopes and stuff. And I guess you could put them on utility tools, too. But that's not good enough. You know, it needs to be something in your line of sight that you can turn on and off, especially when you're sitting in a ship. It's not like there's a balance issue. You're yeah. You're flying a spaceship. You Do these have the same hangers as the ones in New Babbage? There's one way to find out. Okie dokie. And not... That way, not... Got, a, that way got retired a couple patches ago. Uh-oh. 